Good morning. Welcome to worship at Leap of Faith Church and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for coming this morning. I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church and I'm glad you're here. If you haven't checked in already, would you do that in the comment column, please? Just your name, the names of those you're worshiping with. We appreciate knowing who's with us every Sunday morning. If you need to worship anonymously or just prefer to do that, you know you're welcome to. But if you don't have any reason to stay anonymous, please put your name there in the comment column this morning. Uh, we have several announcements today. It is Valentine's Day, and my thanks to those who drew or, or took pictures of Valentine's and sent them for us to enjoy before the worship service this morning. Thank you for going that extra, extra mile to get those Valentines in for us all to share. I'm going to suggest this afternoon that you might want to sit down and write a note to someone who's been essential to you during these last 11 months. Not everyone has a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a spouse or other family members to celebrate Valentine's Day with, but all of us have people who have helped us through the last 11 months, a grocery store manager, a doctor, a teacher. Um, this afternoon, Valentine's Day, please at least consider writing a note to say thank you to that person or those persons for what they've meant to you during these last 11 months. We have Ash Wednesday coming up on this coming Wednesday, February 17th, here in the Sanctuary at Leap of Faith. From 11.30 to 12.30, it's come and go, so I wouldn't expect that there would be a crowd in here at any one time. Masks, of course, social dis dis distancing will be observed. Uh, you'll receive uh, your own packet of ashes to self-impose the ashes this year and the prepackaged communion to serve yourself. It will be a time of personal prayer and devotion. No worship leadership, just to come and pray and reflect. Uh, on Ash Wednesday 2021. I hope that you can be here. I know I will be. Again, that's 1130 to 1230 and it's come and go. Spend as much or, or as little of that hour as you prefer. Uh, we're excited about our virtual mission trip. Watch also on Ash Wednesday for a special edition of the newsletter to show up in your email box. It'll tell you all about, or most of, of everything you'll want to know about the virtual mission trip, building a house for a family in need in Juarez, Mexico. Very exciting opportunity for, for Leap of Faith. I wonder if you've noticed the butterfly that's here behind me this morning. That will be with us throughout all the Sundays of Lent. And, and by Easter, it will be full of color. If you're one who has received um, a piece of the butterfly to color, I hope that you'll take a minute to do that and to send it back to the church. There is a stamped self-addressed envelope, I remind you, that came along with it. So color your piece of the puzzle and, and slip it in that envelope and mail it back to us so we can add it to the butterfly as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection on Easter Sunday coming up in April. If you'd like to know more about Leap of Faith, we have a Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. We'd like you to like that page. We have a website, mylofc.org. To subscribe to the newsletter, you can click a link in, in uh, the link below in the column, uh, the comment column on here on this Facebook page. We'd be happy to add you to our newsletter list. And of course, if all that is too much technology, and I understand that it very well might be, I'd be glad to hear from you by phone. Don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call me at 903-821-4505. I'll be glad to answer questions. I'll be glad just to chat. I'll be glad to listen while you blow off steam or just pray together. Oh, you're welcome to get in touch. And now, are you ready to worship? I'm ready to worship. Will you remember this? You are loved, you are wanted by our Lord Jesus Christ, and you are loved and wanted here at Leap of Faith Church. We're praying, to, we're praying today for the chance to share that love with others, both as we worship and in all the days ahead. We're praying that God will be with us, showing us in Jesus just how to do that, just how best to show that love. The Leap of Faith Band has a special song for us today, Jesus Loves Even Me. Sit back and listen and worship, please, as they sing. I am so glad that our 
Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Arms, do I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me? I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, if there is only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, oh, this my song shall return to me. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. I know he loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Leap of Faith is an independent church. We're not associated with any other local church, with any denomination. People often ask us what we believe. We embrace the historic confession of the Christian faith that is the Apostles' Creed. The words will be on the screen, but if you know it by memory, say it along with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Most of us find that we worship with the light or heart when we've come clean before God about those things that are standing in the way of the relationship we'd most like to have with God. Think back, if you would, about the things that have, have been obstacles to you in the relationship you'd like to have. Name them to yourself. No need to tell them to another living soul. Name them to yourself. Name them to God. And let's pray. God, we know that the Bible says love is patient and kind. We know that the Bible says that love isn't envious or braggy or proud. We know, God, that the Bible says love doesn't dishonor others, that it isn't self-seeking or easily angered. We know that love keeps no record of wrongs. We're trying, God. We are trying, but we fall short. Forgive us and help us try again. We confess this and so much more to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you be sure that when you've confessed, when I've confessed in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're forgiven. And so am I. Amen. Joys and concerns this morning. Look at this list, would you? 
I'm asking your prayers today as I do every week, most every week, to pray for those who lead our world, all the countries of all the world, the leaders of our country, those who lead our state, our community, our schools, our churches. Please pray for all those in positions of leadership. Pray, too, if you will, for all those who are ill, injured, suffering in any way, including all those who are suffering from or recovering from COVID-19. I ask your prayers as well for Kathy, uh, Kathy Norma, Pam, Duane, um, Julie's daughter-in-law's father, Ray, Cheryl, Natalie, Michelle's mom, Ralph, Pat, Laurie, pray too, if you would, for all those who live in nursing homes and those who work in nursing homes and anyone who is dear to you who is ill. Uh, please include those people in your prayers as well, along with those who are organizing and staffing vaccine distribution programs across the United States and around the world. Please pray for churches everywhere. Uh, after 11 months, coming up on, on 12 months of uh, pandemic, please pray for churches everywhere as they continue to make important decisions about, uh, about how to go forward from here. I ask your prayers for all those in all our schools, for health care workers, for those who are homebound without families. Please pray for all those who serve in our military. Hunter, Tyler, Jessica here at Leap of Faith Church. Three birthdays this week, one this very day. Gail Conklin, happy birthday. Josh Smith on the 19th and Fred Spears, one of our Leap of Faith band members on February 19th. We wish all three of these happy birthday. Uh, pray, if you will, for our virtual mission trip, for the progress we're making toward building a home for a family in Juarez. Now, we don't know who this family is, so please pray that God will match Leap of Faith Church up with exactly the family we can help the very most. We're thanking God for Rod Leard and his granddaughter, Maylee, who assisted in worship last Sunday. We're thanking God for the Allen children who are assisting in worship today. We're thanking God for our board of directors met last Wednesday. Steve Robinson, Greg Holbrook, who did an insurance review of our building last week. Um, I'm thanking God for everyone who brought food for We Gather Together, the project supporting the Lakeway Christian Community Resale Barn and Visions of Sugar Plums. Thank you for your generous heart. Thank you to all who sent Valentine's, the Leap of Faith Band. And on this Valentine's Day, my heart especially goes out full of gratitude to Brad Nixon and Summer Holbrook, who produced this worship service. I bet yours does too. And, and if you have others to add to the prayer list, the comment column is right there. Put names in that comment column. And if you need more, uh, more anonymity than that, you know you're welcome to call in and ask me for, uh, for more personal and private prayers, 903-821-4505. Now let's pray. God, now that the COVID vaccine program is falling into place, your church here at Leap of Faith is trying hard to put into place plans for opening this building for worship. God, we are asking your guidance this morning in helping us make those decisions. You have called us, we believe, to care for your people, body, mind, and soul. You've called us, God, to provide sanctuary for them in a world that's full of snaps, snares, and traps, and pitfalls of all kinds. And you have been faithful, God, as we have done our best to be faithful. Going forward, help us judge accurately when the time is right to turn up the heat in this building, to turn on the lights, to open the doors, and to invite the church right back in. We need to be back together. We want to be back together, God, live and in person. But we are unswerving in our belief that you absolutely do not want us to compromise the health of your people. Show us the way to go. Show us when and how to go as you lead. Hear this prayer, God, as well as the spoken and unspoken prayers we lift to you now. Those who are joyful, God, may their joys only increase. And those who are sorrowful, God, comfort and heal them. We are praying all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are grateful to the Allen children who today are leading us in the Lord's Prayer. We continue now in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Art in heaven, hallowed be the name. 
the kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for all the ways that you support this church. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for um, all the ways that you have been gracious over the last, especially over the last 11 months of all the, all the dodging and weaving and changing of plans that we've had to do. You are, as far as I'm concerned, the absolute best, and I feel fortunate to be your pastor. Um, if you would like to give a financial offering, there are several ways to do that. We do have the giving button here on here on the uh, worship service. We have the text to give option. The number is on the screen, but it's 903-225-8774. You can give through PayPal. The button is on our newsletter and on our website. And of course, you could just write a check. Make it to LOFC, Leap of Faith Church. Uh, 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. And that works well, too. Thank you again for your generosity. Let's pray. God, thank you for everyone who loves you and your church and makes their love known in heartfelt ways. Thank you for all the gifts of every kind, each one that has ever been given. Thank you, God, for the givers, each one of them, each and every one of them. We're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. We're still in Mark. We're still reading in the Gospel according to Mark today. Um, it's chapter 8, verses 14 through 21. And this is the way that story goes. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. The disciples, they discussed this with one another and said, It's because we have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember... Don't you remember, Jesus said to his disciples, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many basket, baskets full of pieces did you pick up when the supper was over? Twelve, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, Jesus asked his disciples, how many baskets full of pieces did you pick up? And those disciples, they answered, seven. Jesus said to them, do you still not understand? I ask God to bless this reading of God's Word. Okay, put down your phones and turn the screen where you can't see it because there's no Googling allowed. Does anyone here, does anyone here know who Dr. Belding Hibbard Scribner is? His isn't a household name, at least not in most households, but he is, or I, or I should say, was instrumental in changing life for lots and lots and lots of people. Dr. Scribner, along with two other men, invented, invented what's become the dialysis machine. Dr. Scribner, he intended to invent the dialysis machine. His other invention is something that he never intended to invent. In the early days of dialysis, in the very early days of dialysis, when there were very few dialysis, dialysis machines that had even been built, decisions had to be made about who would be treated on those machines and thereby prolong life-giving treatment. In the course of setting up systems for determining who among the many who wanted it would receive this treatment that had such limited availability, Dr. Scribner inadvertently invented the whole field of biomedical ethics. I remember taking biomedical ethics in seminary. The field of biomedical ethics, it deals with life and death considerations like the one generated by the first dialysis machine. For instance, who should receive treatment when treatment 
treatment availability is limited and the candidates for that treatment are so very many. It's consideration that we unfortunately have become more familiar with in recent times. Another interesting thing about Dr. Scribner is that when he had a patient who was rejected by the first committee on bio, biomedical considerations, when he had a, a patient who was rejected for treatment on the machine that he had initially invented, Dr. Scribner and others worked secretly to build another dialysis machine, especially for the 15-year-old girl who had been denied treatment. They built a machine just for her so that she could receive treatment at home. I thought this story was fascinating. I had never until this week, I had never heard of Dr. Scribner, nor had I heard of the history of dialysis. And what I think is especially fascinating is that the very first dialysis machine, it was constructed out of a modified Sears Roebuck freezer. A Sears Roebuck freezer. He didn't have much to work with, but Dr. Scribner took what he had and he used what he had to change lives. He didn't have much to work with, but he took what he had and he used it to save lives. And that's part of what today's Bible story is about too, using what we have, potentially even to save lives. Let's have a closer look. First, some background. This story, the story that I read just earlier, it concludes the part of the gospel according to Mark where Jesus and the disciples have been traveling around Galilee, heavily involved in doing ministry. They've been out there traveling around, traveling around Galilee. They've been teaching, preaching, healing, driving out demons, and they've been feeding the hungry. In fact, by the time this story happens, the disciples, they have fed thousands of people. They have fed thousands of people on almost nothing. A tiny bit of bread and just a few fish. In fact, at Jesus' insistence, those disciples, they have done that twice. They've used what they have. They've used what's on the hand. They've used it to work miracles. And then we come to the story that we have this morning. Jesus and his disciples, they've been crisscrossing the Sea of Galilee in a boat, doing ministry to both Gentiles and Jews. And today, here they are again. They're in the boat once more. We know this from the verse that comes just before the one that we read this morning. They are all together in this boat, headed evidently to Bethsaida, which we know because that's in the verse that comes right after the story that we read this morning. So there are Jesus, the Jesus that Jesus and the disciples, they're afloat. And the disciples, whichever one among them was in charge of provisioning, that disciple has brought along just one loaf, just one loaf of bread for them to have, for them to eat on that trip there on the Sea of Galilee. It couldn't have been a long trip. The Sea of Galilee is only 13 miles north to south. It's only eight miles east to west. Nevertheless, the only food available to the disciples as they were traveling along was food that, that had been brought with them, which was just this one loaf of bread. The disciples, they must have been like most of us when we travel. We'd like to know where the next meal is coming from. And mealtime, it got to be an issue there on that boat that day. The conversation among the disciples, it escalates. The conversation among the disciples, it gets hyperbolic. And as the disciples talk, they begin to disregard the fact that they do have this one loaf of bread on hand. Instead, they ramp up their concern over where the next meal is coming from, saying, we have no bread, the disciples forget, or at least they disregard the fact that they have A, at least the one loaf of bread, and B, Jesus, whom they had already seen multiply, multiply bread, even just crumbs, many times over. Jesus, of course, is on that boat with those disciples, and he listens into this conversation that they're having about no bread, about having no bread. And he says to the disciples, essentially, look, why is this even an issue? Have you forgotten, Jesus says to those disciples, have you forgotten that you do have one loaf of bread and you've seen what I can do with just the littlest amount of bread? Weren't you paying attention? You were there. You saw me. You saw us feeding thousands with almost nothing with much more left over when all was said and done. 
And Jesus looks at the disciples there on that boat and he says to them, don't you understand? Do you still not understand? And that's a story that we have today. What does it mean? What does it mean for you? What does it mean for me? It means that no matter how little it looks like we have to work with, if Jesus is on board with us, that little that we have, it will be enough. It will be more than enough. I'm talking about doing ministry now, which is what Jesus and the disciples were doing when they fed all those thousands with just that little tiny bit of bread. Now, as I, as I said earlier, this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, the season of prayer and reflection and repentance that comes before new life, the resurrection that Easter brings. If you're on the Leap of Faith Church newsletter mailing list, this Wednesday you'll be receiving a special edition of our newsletter that will tell you about the opportunity that Leap of Faith Church has to build this house I've been talking about in Juarez, Mexico, for a family that is right now, right now, sheltered by cardboard and packing crates. We can build a house, we, you and I, we can build a house, not this year by going to Mexico and hammering nails, though I hope one day we'll be able to do that, but this year, this year, right now, this spring, we can build a house by giving just $7,000 to a nonprofit nonprofit organization in El Paso called SPJ. Summer has worked with this organization for 10 years now. It is reputable, it is effective. The house that we can build for $7,000 is pretty basic. A concrete, concrete foundation, cinder block walls, a metal roof. It will be safely plumbed with wood burning stove and electric lights. The $7,000 includes a refurbished stove and refrigerator that each cost $17 and a working toilet at $19, as well as a bed for each family member. Each bed, each mattress costs $63. I am excited that the actual building, the actual construct, construction work on that house is done by men who live in the community. Six men will be paid $13 each for two weeks of work, triple the amount that they could earn doing other jobs in their community. $7,000 to pay for a house for a family with children who are attending school, at least one adult who works, with no history of substance or physical abuse. I know for certain that many who are worshiping at Leap of Faith Church today are financially strapped. I know for certain that times are tough. I am also pretty sure that none of us is being sheltered by cardboard and packing crates. And I'm also pretty sure that for most, if not all of us, we aren't living in a no loaf situation. We might, figuratively speaking, have just one loaf to work with, but if we will offer that one loaf to Jesus for his own use, we'll find that what we have is not only plenty, but more than enough. What you'll see in the special edition of the Leap of Faith newsletter that comes to you on this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, will be a complete breakdown of the cost of building a house, a sturdy door for the bathroom. It costs just $30. The other components of that house are sorted out so that if you have a lot to give, you can give that generously. And if you have just a little to give, you can give that generously too. Choosing to purchase some part of the house that is as essential as any other, just less costly. So will you please be doing this in the days before this coming Wednesday? Will you please look at what you have available and know no matter how much or how little it is, offer it to Jesus for Jesus' use on behalf of a family that today, right now, this minute, is in need of basic, safe shelter. Sometimes we're inclined to discount our resources, to assume that what we have is so little that it can't possibly make any real difference. Not so. 
if we'll pay attention to what we have instead of what we don't have, and if we'll hold that out to Jesus, we will see miracles take place today, just as surely as those disciples saw them so many years ago. This is true, incidentally, absolutely true, not just in the situation of this virtual mission trip. It is true in every single aspect of our lives. If we'll pay attention to the resources that we have available, focus on what we have instead of on what we don't have, and if we'll turn to Jesus with it, I promise you that every time, every time, we'll find that we have more than enough. We often have a lot more at our disposal than we at first notice, but mainly, of course, what we have available to us is the power of Jesus. Mainly what we have available to us is the miracle of Jesus. Those stories of Jesus enabling the disciples to feed thousands with just crumbs, that is not a fairy tale. It is the gospel truth. It's how Jesus works. And if you need something more recent than that, well, remember Dr. Belding Hibbard Scribner, inventor of the dialysis machine who ultimately changed life for who knows how many thousands of people, starting with just a Sears Roebuck freezer. The disciples, Dr. Scribner, they are no more special than you or than me. What Jesus did for them, he will, by God, do for us too. Jesus can do a lot with so very little. And you know what? So can we. Amen. Thank you for coming. If you showed up late, would you put your name in the comment column now? It is always good to see who's worshiping this morning. I remind you that if you received a piece of the butterfly to color, go find it and color it now. Put it in an envelope and look forward to that butterfly just glowing with color in the weeks of, of Lent coming ahead until it's a complete, uh, a completely colored butterfly that we'll have here for Easter Sunday. If you're ready to give your life to our risen Lord, if you're ready to give yourself to Jesus as a member of Leap of Faith Church, give me a call, 903-821-4505. I would be so happy to receive you into membership here at Leap of Faith. Be sure to like the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page if you haven't already do if you haven't already done that. If you would like to subscribe to the newsletter, go all the way to the bottom of the comment column and, and fill out the form there. I'll add you to the Leap of Faith uh, email list this afternoon. And now finally we close. I came across these words of Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 4 this past week. I invite you to take these words with you into the week ahead. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and people. I hope to see you on Ash Wednesday here in the sanctuary, 1130 to 1230, middle of the day. Come and go. Not expecting a crowd, we will do our best to protect your health and well-being. Wear a mask, prepare to be six feet apart, uh, prepare to pray and to reflect on, uh, on your life and the life that we share together. Hope you have a good week. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Thanks for coming today. Stick around if you will and listen to the Leap of Faith Band play just a little bit longer. Happy Valentine's Day.
take the 